Um, just to start, uh, a very brief synopsis of who we are. So, Spiezzi Organics was the first company in the UK to get 100% organic certification by the Soil Association across the whole brand. What does that mean? That means we don't use any synthetic chemicals in our products at all. Um, we are recognised as an ethical organisation. We are accredited by Ban the Microbead, which I can recommend if you want to uh, load up an app, which is a small thing that you could all do today, very easy, load up Ban the Microbead app onto your phones or whatever, and you'll be able to suss out immediately whether your skincare product has got a microbead in it or not. So that's a simple change you can make. So here are some stats, uh, some simple facts really. Not the greatest facts to start when you're looking at this amazing view and see the sea out there, but basically microplastics, there's a big debate about it, about how much does do microplastic and microbeads represent within the plastic pollution of the oceans. The figures suggest that it's between 0.01% and 4.1% of plastics that enter the marine environment. So in simple terms, that represents between 2,461 to 8,627 8, tonnes <coughs> per annum go into the sea in the EU. Um, by, the, by 2020, there's been some EU legislation passed, so hurrah. Um, and the EU legislation from the UK Cosmetics Toiletry and Perfumery Association are saying that synthetic solid plastic particles used for exfoliating and cleansing that are non-biodegradable in the marine environment need to be phased out by 2020. Okay, now that's a conflict to the stats in the EU report that I've been reading about that says that by 2020 that there is an EU requirement that that release is reduced not to 4,000 tonnes actually, reduced by 4,000 tonnes between 2016 and 2020. Okay, that means I'm not a great mathematician, my daughter just got a, a GCSE in advanced maths, but if we do a rough calculation of how many tonnes of microbeads are going to be released into the ocean over the next four years and take off 4,000 tonnes, we've still got a hell of a lot of microbeads going into the ocean. Um, microbeads are predominantly found in wash-off products, shower gels, uh, shampoos, toothpaste, you know those toothpastes that whiten your teeth? They've got the microbeads in them. There are different types of microbeads. So a microbead classification is a microbead is between one millimeter and five millimeters. The issue we've got with the EU cosmetic le legislation is it doesn't cover nanoparticular microbeads, i.e. anything that's less than one millimeter. Okay, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, one shower, if you're using a certain product, can result in approximately 100,000 microbeads going into the sea. Uh, I've popped a soap in every bag, because I've worked out that if you use a soap instead of a, micro instead of a, a shower gel, then if everybody used those soaps, we'd be reducing um, the microbeads going into the sea by 10 million. That would do nicely as a good start. The other thing when you don't use a shower gel is shower gels have um, sodium laureth sulfate and some other um, ingredients in it which strip the natural oils from your skin. Soap's just really good, guys, you know, it's simple, it doesn't have any crap in it. I'm not allowed to say crap. Okay, I just did. So, so it's interesting stuff. This, the global cosmetics industry was worth $433 billion in, 23, in 2012. If you take that and you take, let's say that uh, actually shower gels, shampoos represent at least 10% of our total purchases, and you take the percentage of companies that put, might use microbeads, 
what percentage of microplastics are going into our ocean. It's an interesting one. Um, so yeah, micro microplastics are not restricted to wash odd. I'm going to call it, stick to wash odd products, um, but they're wash off products. So they can be found on leave on products as well as in nano particular format. So they're called microns and they are 0.003 millimeters or less. So you're not going to spot them, are you? Because you're not until you, maybe you'll see those little spingles in your toothpaste and you think, what the hell's that? Okay, that's, that's, that's what they are. Um, I've put this up. This is a really good eye test for the guys at the back there. Um, microbeads, face to fish. Microbeads are plastic. They were brought in, there was a patent brought in in uh, 1959 actually for microplastics. Uh, polyethylene was ground down. Ladies, this is for you. Um, they were using uh, talc, actually, which there's a whole load of stuff about talc and cancer, which I won't talk about now, but anyhow. They decided and found out that grinding polyethylene down made a fantastic foundation, okay? Polyethylene is used in nanoparticular format. It's in eyeshadows, it's in foundation, it's in lipsticks. It's on leave-in products, okay? It's not covered by the cosmetics regulations, but it's worth thinking about. So this talks about over 1,147 personal cleansing products contain microbeads. The issue you've got is microbeads, get, they just do not get filtered by our sewage system, especially when they're in micron. They can't. So they go out through the sewage, sewage overflow, they go directly into our sewage system, they go into the ocean, and then fish eat them. So they are in our food chain, okay? I was inspired, I'm going to tell you a brief story, because I was inspired when I sat on a train in 2006 uh, with a couple of other colleagues of mine, and we were talking about our products, and we were talking about, this is our, we were actually going up for a ward, this is a lemongrass and marigold body scrub, I was sitting around going, oh, I think we stand a good chance of winning, it tastes really good, mmm, skincare product, and this bloke was sitting there. And he sort of said, well, what do you do? And uh, we told him. And he said, I'm a photographer. I said, where are you going? He said, off to the Arctic to take photographs. And he showed us some photographs of just clear blue waters with these little, I thought they were air bubbles, microbeads. This was back in 2006. So this has been going on for ages. I mean, microplastics have been used since the 1960s. So we already have an accumulation of plastic because the, the, the figures seem to suggest that it could take five to six hundred years for a plastic to, bi to biodegrade. Okay? And as a microbead goes into the ocean, it doesn't just stay as a little plastic particle, it absolutely absorbs toxins. So on its journey into our food chain, it absorbs toxins, and then we eat it. I don't think that's good enough. So um, I'm a bit pissed off, actually, about the whole thing. Um, how to spot a microbead? Clearly, not many companies are going to go, here's a lovely cleaning product, it's uh, got loads of microbeads in it, so it's really good for you. Um, these are the ways you'll spot a microbead. Polyethylene I've just mentioned, in masses of products, including leave-in foundations, eyeshadows, blah, 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 keep pointing this out to my teenage daughters, not going down well. Um, you'll find it in polypropylene, uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that because my teeth might fall out, but, you know, there are a whole load of stuff. This is the interesting one, too, is polymers. Polymers are small chains of... Um, they're small ch chains of atoms, basically, but polymers can be either synthetic or non-synthetic. They're used in suntan lotion, OK? You could put up to 10 trillion, possibly more, microbeads on your skin when you use a full bottle of suntan lotion. Have a think about that. Because there's some issues about how microbeads react with UV. I think something will come up further along down the line about the use of this stuff. I really do. I get very emotional about it. it makes me really angry. So, um, basically, um, 
There are 268,000 tonnes of microbeads and plastics going into the ocean every year. I've taken these. If anybody wants access to a very hefty research papers, I've got them. Um, one of the things that has been said is there's some issues around the big boys, and I will name the big boys because there are top five companies. Oops, just going to go here. These have got microbeads in them, okay? So there's a slight irony in, um, this is Johnson & Johnson, who also make talcum powder that's not great. But anyhow, we won't talk about that. Um, these have all got microbeads in them. So actually the fact that they're called um, clear, clean and clear, it depends how you define clean and clear, doesn't it really? Might be clean and clear to some. They're cheap. And actually, from my point of view, we, we used to use other abrasives, ground up walnuts, though we used to use volcano ash, used to use all sorts of things that can, can be used to exfoliate. There's quite a lot of salt actually around about, it's really good. Microbeads do not exfoliate in the same way that a natural product does. So you just need to buy more. As a cynic, I would say, well, yeah, let's shift some more stuff or put some plastic in because it doesn't actually exfoliate. There is no thought that goes into the long-term effects of these products, in my opinion. And actually, although there's a, a commitment and the government have said they need to be phased out by 2020, there's still not clarity about what gets phased out. L'Oreal, Unilever, Procter & Gamble, Estee Lauder, Johnson & Johnson are the biggest players in the market. Their turnover per annum is £65 billion pounds a year, okay? £65 billion pounds a year. There are another 15 companies below them that turn over £50 billion. So these are big players. They are reticent, I think, to get rid of these products in their products. And this is where I think everybody needs to take action, just by not buying the bloody stuff, quite frankly. You know, if we don't buy it, they're not going to shift it, and then there's going to be less of a requirement. And it may be cheap, but what's the long-term cost if we don't just think about our pennies in our pocket and we think about what surrounds us? What do we need to sustain us as humans? So this picture sort of shows the number of microbeads in each of these products. Um, which is quite interesting. Um, there are labelling issues. So there's a company called Bliss, who I will now describe. They're wonderful sounding product that's a vanilla and bergamot body buff with shea butter and sweet almond oil. How many ladies would buy that? Well, how many chaps would buy that? Okay. What it doesn't say is it's uh, and microbeads. Okay. So you. You need to read the back of the labels to understand what we're doing. It's not complicated. Here are some microbead samples, what I prepared earlier. So they are really, really small. And you can understand why they go into the food chain, because they just look like fish food when they go out. <coughs> That's, these, these are just uh, microbeads. They're not the nanoparticular format. But in, in terms of uh, sun cream, there's a product that's been created called Sun Spheres, um, and they, they are at 0 0.0003 millimetres, and they create a vis viscous layer on your skin to stop sunshine coming through, okay? Um, and that's why we need to think about what we put on our skin. I think we need to think about it really seriously. We also need the cosmetics industry to agree on a clearly defined what is a microbead, because there's some shilly-shallying going around at the moment, which there are some loopholes currently. <coughs> so to avoid the loopholes, there needs to be an absolute establishment of what is non-biodegradable, because there isn't clarity on non-biodegradable at the moment. And what I do know is that some microbeads will float at the surface of the ocean, but there have done some scientific testing and after three, three weeks they start to biodegrade and they sink to the bottom of the ocean and they've been found in sampling as deep as 5,000 feet. So 
clarity on what it meat calls a biodegradable polymer would be really helpful. Um, most people think, oh, microbeads are wash-off products. They're not. They're in leave-on products as well. I think that needs to be covered within the scope of the EU legislation. And they also need to not exclude microns, the particles that they're just not covered by the cosmetics legislation. The positive news is I really believe in people power from our business, which has been small roots. We've, we've found, I, people thought I was a raving hippie 15 years ago because I was talking about mindful choices and all this sort of thing. And we do spa treatments that reach the parasympathetic level and people go, she's a bloody lunatic. And now I'm mindful. So I'm on trend age 54, rock on. Um, but I, what I do believe is that people are actually understanding that small changes can make a positive difference. The really gratifying thing is that the reason the legislation has come in and is being passed and is at government level about microbeads is that <coughs> through over 357,000 people in the UK signed a petition to ban microbeads. Rock on. Waitrose have said they are not going to stock any products in Waitrose from September that have any microbeads in. Get the rest of the supermarkets on board, you know? Absolutely. And, and in, terms of, in terms of people buying, what I would say is if you want to make an informed choice, then simply look. If you, I'm, I'm 54, so the old eyesight, I'm going, I don't know about other people, when you go into a restaurant, you start doing this with the menu. But, so, so labels on the back of things can be quite challenging. If you look for a logo that certifies something organic, Soil Association, Association EcoCert, BioCert, they all coming under a Cosmos logo from 2017, you know you're going to be buying something that's good for you and is good for the planet. It's not complicated. It's about making a choice that doesn't just centre on us, because every choice we make centres on what's out there. I think this thing is just called conscious living. I think there are more and more people clearly involved. I think viewed as an exemplar of people getting together and making a change. And it's just about doing the right thing. So all I'd say is do the right thing. It's not complicated. Thank you very much for listening. I am around if you want to be bombarded with excruciating figures. <laughs> let me know. But thank you very much for listening.